Over the course of a long career, an archaeologist is bound to see one or two things that they struggle to explain. Normally, that's no problem, as when they can't explain something, they turn to scientists for assistance. But sometimes scientists are no help either. On those occasions, we're left with strange, unsolved mysteries. Mysteries like the ones you're about to see in this video. Around a thousand years ago, the architects and designers of India mastered the art of making pillars for their temples. Special pillars known as stamba were integral to the design of the Hindu temples of the age. And nowhere will you find stamba like the one you'll find in the Chinake Shava temple of Balur, Karnataka. The temple, which is dedicated to Vishnu, was ordered to be built by King Vishnu Vardhana in the year 1117 but took more than a century to complete. The entire temple is stunning, but the most incredible thing inside it is the Kartika Dipatsava Stamba, also known as the Anti-Gravity Pillar. It stands 42 feet tall, and yet it doesn't have a foundation or a base. It simply stands on a smaller star-shaped granite platform. There's no structural support around the foot of the pillar, nor is there any bonding agent like mortar sealing it to the floor. Everything we know about physics tells us that the anti-gravity pillar should fall over, and yet it doesn't. Several studies have been performed in recent times, but none have adequately explained what keeps the tower upright. Next, we have a controversial topic, the story of the Ica Stones of Peru. These andesite stones are rounded, smooth stones upon which carvings have been engraved, some showing fish and plants. They're commonly found in tombs in Peru's Ica province, although why they were buried with the dead is unclear. A typical design for an Ica stone might be a diagram of a llama or a flower. During the 1960s, interest in the stones increased when a Peruvian physicist named Javier Cabrera Darquea showed the world his collection of Ica stones, some of which appeared to show astronauts and dinosaurs. Such knowledge would have been impossible for the people of the time, and so forgery was suspected. As it later transpired, a Peruvian farmer admitted to faking some of the stones that had been sold to Darkea, but not all of them. There are still many stones in Darkea's possession that didn't come from the farmer, some of which appear to show maps that would have been impossible to draw at the time without being able to see the land from above. It's tempting to write all of the Ica stones off as forgeries just because some of them were, but that's not how things work. Finding human-made structures that date back more than five or 6,000 years is a rare event. The Great Pyramid of Giza, for example, is 5,000 years old. The megalithic temples of Malta have been scientifically proven to be 8,500 years old and are claimed by some as the oldest remaining human-made structures on the planet. That makes this next claim hard to believe. According to researchers Johan Heine and Michael Tellinger, the site of Anunnaki in Maputo, Mozambique contains an ancient metropolis built by human hands 200,000 years ago. The claim is outrageous from an archaeological and scientific point of view, so it's no wonder that so many experts have already rejected it. Still, there's clearly something ancient at this location. We can see the remains of roads surrounding circular structures and even what appear to be agricultural areas. The presence of ancient gold mines in the surrounding area has also been detected. All of this points to the possible existence of an ancient advanced gold mining society that lived tens of thousands of years ago and then disappeared, leaving barely a trace. There's no doubt that there was an ancient civilization here, but could it really have been as long ago as Heine and Tellinger claim? Now we're headed back to India for a look at Krishna's Butterball in Mahabalipuram. It's not hard to see why this enormous rock was given its nickname. The boulder is said by local legends to be a chunk of butter that was stolen by the gods and then dropped from the heavens. Much like the anti-gravity pillar we looked at earlier, Krishna's butterball appears to be immune to the effects of gravity. It balances precariously on the slope of a hill, but it never moves. 
Scientists say that it almost certainly is a phenomenon known as a glacial erratic which was stranded on the hill when the ice melted beneath it. But Hindu tradition says that when Krishna was a baby, he liked nothing better than stealing butter. And this is simply a big dollop that got away from him. There's an alternative name for the stone which is Van Arai Kal and translates into English as Sky God Stone. Local children slide down the hill and play on the sides of the boulder, and some even try to push it off. Thus far, nobody's been able to persuade it to move, even so much as an inch. During the summer of 2022, archaeologists working at a site in Mexico set about the task of attempting to uncover and rediscover what they thought was an image of the Virgin Mary. Long before they'd even finished their work, it was apparent that what they were looking at had nothing to do with Catholicism. Instead, this is a 16th century pre-Hispanic mural depicting the rabbit god Tepastacatl, the Aztec deity of alcohol and drunkenness. The surprising discovery was made at the convent of Tepoztlan in Tepoztlan City, Morelos, which was built between 1555 and 1580. With the benefit of hindsight, the archaeologists should have realized something was amiss earlier. The Virgin Mary has never been painted with feather plumes or red shields, and both of these details were visible even before the attempt to reveal the painting began. The big puzzle here for archaeologists is why these Aztec murals were left in place after the convent was adapted by Christians. The entire convent is dedicated to the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin. So why would its earliest occupants have tolerated the presence of what they surely have perceived to be a false idol on their walls? In October 2022, a tiny and mysterious hand-carved figurine was recovered from a field in Dartmoor, England. Those who've seen the figure all say the same thing. The open-mouthed expression of the distressed-looking person it depicts makes it look like the figure is screaming. Local historians have a few theories about what it might be. Some say it's a pilgrim's token from the medieval era. But there are plenty of others who believe it might have connections to the practice of witchcraft in Dartmoor many centuries ago. The clay figure is of a kind that's said to have been used as a witch's puppet, which stands in for the human form during black magic rituals. It was found partially buried on the edge of a stream, with the act of burial appearing to be deliberate. The circle around the figure's head might be intended to represent a halo. A single word, an idiom, appears in an inscription on the reverse of the figure, but this isn't a Latin word and doesn't have any known meaning or translation. The technique used to make the figure, which involved smoke-firing pipe clay in a mold, has been around since Roman times. The artifact isn't thought to be quite so old, but we're still unsure about its origins and age. All of the pyramids of Egypt are mysterious, but the Pyramid of Menkara might be more mysterious than all of the others put together. It's one of the three main pyramids of Giza on the Giza Plateau, Cairo, albeit the smallest of the three, and is believed to be 4,300 years old. Inside it, archaeologists found an empty sarcophagus made of basalt, a wooden casket lid, and unidentified bones. However, this does not mean that the Pyramid of Menkara was ever used as a tomb. Instead, the wood and the human bones date to the early Christian period. Someone was apparently brought inside here and buried long after the pyramid was first sealed, after which it was resealed without leaving so much as a trace. It's possible that the sarcophagus was older and belonged to Menkara, but it was lost at sea when the ship that was carrying it to England for examination sank off the coast of Spain. Everything about this pyramid is different from the other two at the site. The other two are made of limestone, but Menkara had his made out of granite. It's thought that the king died before his pyramid was completed, so we'll never know what his intentions for it were. Leonardo da Vinci is one of the greatest humans who ever lived, when it comes to intellect and capability. He was an artist, inventor, painter, writer, philosopher, and scientist responsible for breakthroughs in all of his chosen fields. He was also a committed keeper of notes, and his notebooks are every bit as fascinating as his many works of art. You can prove that to yourself if you like, because since 2017, 
All of the Renaissance Master's surviving notebooks have been digitized and they're available to read online free of charge. The books contain personal notes, sketches, diagrams, ideas for inventions, and far more. The Codex Arundel, for example, is a 283-page long notebook containing what could have been considered new and interesting thoughts on the topics of geometry and mechanics for the time he wrote them, which was somewhere between 1480 and 1518. Anyone who tries to read them should prepare themselves, though, because they're difficult to comprehend and frequently turn from one topic to another without reason or warning. As da Vinci himself scribbled in one of his books, this is a collection without order, drawn from many papers which I have copied here in the hope I may rearrange them later according to their subjects. Seems he never got around to it. At some point in the distant past, the Rohan Codex was placed in the archives of the Hungarian Academy of Science. Nobody knows exactly when, because it went into the archive unlabeled. It wasn't rediscovered until 1838. The experts of the time quickly realized that the manuscript was written in code and set about the task of trying to decrypt it. That was nearly 200 years ago, and the codex remains untranslated. There are multiple pictures and illustrations in the manuscript, but they haven't helped with the translation attempts. If anything, they make it more confusing. Some of the scenes depicted in the images are of a religious nature, whereas others show battles happening on land and at sea. Recent scientific testing of the Rohan Codex has proven that it was created during the 16th century using paper that was probably made in Italy. Whoever made it may never have intended for it to be translated, the diversity of the symbols they've used is immense, and they didn't include a cipher. If you think you might be the right person to crack the code, you're free to give it a go. Whole sections of the Rohan Codex have been uploaded to the internet, and the general public is free to study it as they wish. You might have to suspend your disbelief for a moment when we discuss this next artifact, but bear with us because it's a story worth hearing. This carved stone is the so-called Roswell Rock, so named because it was found in 2004 a little over 20 miles away from the site of the alleged UFO crash landing of 1947. It's now generally accepted that the Roswell UFO incident was a well-executed hoax, but the existence of this rock can't be explained away as easily as faked video footage. The stone has interesting magnetic properties. When a magnet is placed over its thick end, it spins clockwise, but it spins anti-clockwise if a magnet is held above the inner end. The moon symbols on its surface are also thought to be significant, as they're almost identical to symbols that have appeared in crop circles all over North America. Scientists and archaeologists are positive it's a hoax, but they're struggling to identify any marks on its surface from any tool or machine used in its manufacture. Not even one single abrasion can be found, even when the artifact is examined under a microscope. A hoax is still the most likely explanation, but the mystery of how it was made persists. Was Hunebedden in the Netherlands built by giants? Probably not. But then again, we're struggling to come up with a better explanation as to how the stone formations on the outskirts of Drenthe were put together. The megalithic site is approximately 5,000 years old. Archaeologists have never been able to identify which culture built it or how the construction process worked. Based on what we know about history, the only people living in this part of the Netherlands 5,000 years ago were nomadic savages. Barbarians don't tend to build sophisticated stone structures, so it's likely that our understanding of this part of Dutch history leaves a lot to be desired. Excavations at the site have confirmed that the Funnel Beaker people brought their dead here to be buried. But they almost certainly didn't build it. It's likely that they found it when they arrived in the area and considered it sacred because they couldn't comprehend how it could have been built. That's something that the Funnel Beaker people and we have in common. People from this era tended to roam from place to place without building permanent settlements, so why build a permanent monument out of 40-ton rocks? We wish we had a good answer to that question. The tale of the Belosian Sphere is quite a wild one. 
It's a device made by a Greek spiritualist during the 1950s through which he claimed to be able to capture images and take photographs of spirits and also Venusian life forms. Story sounds utterly absurd. So why has science had such a difficult time disproving it? Alexandros Bellos claims to have seen otherworldly entities while high in the mountains during his time with the Greek army in 1940 and spent the rest of his life trying to prove the existence of what he'd seen. Believing the entities were attracted by the low oxygen levels on mountaintops, he created his device, which was a glass vacuum bell, and set to work trying to capture some of them. Whether or not the shapes and figures he photographed within the sphere are the spirits of the dead or visitors from another world is for other people to decide. What can't be doubted, though, is that something did indeed appear within the sphere. And there ought to have been nothing there at all. Sessions with the sphere happened in front of experts and journalists, and all of them reported seeing something within the glass dome. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.